programs can get inputs from a couple different locations. Let's say you have a MATLAB file, .m file. You might want to get input from a user. You also may want to get an input from a file, a database, or something like a source from the internet. And then this script is going to run and then have some kind of output. You also might want to write back to the database, write back to a file, give some information back to a screen, or push the data back out to the internet. So it kind of goes both ways. We want to be able to retrieve data into our program and then also be able to export it back out. I'm going to show you how to do that with a couple different functions. MATLAB, it's fairly easy. You use the input function. You can also save files. All right, so let's just ask how many eggs do we have? And the user is going to input it. I'm using the input function. I'm going to make the eggs into an integer. I'll change eggs minus two and switch it back to a string. All right, so if I try to run this, I'm going to have some problems with this. OK, how many eggs do I have? I'll say eight. All right, and it didn't really display eight there. So I just need to do num to string. All right, and if I put eight again, I can see that I have six. But if I run it again, and I put 8.2, and I can see I have 6.2 hatchlings. So that's a bad input. I need to validate the input somehow. And so maybe I want to switch that to like an int 32 on that line. And so when I ask for an input, I put 6.2. Okay, it's going to round it off to 6. And it says the hatchlings are 4 because 2 are still developing. All right, so there's an example of soliciting an input from the user. All right, you can also, um, all right, as we showed, there was the, okay, hold on, let me go ahead and uh, we can also use round, for round off the number. All right, and so if I put in 7.6, it's going to go to 8. If I want to use like a ceiling function, I can do that, 8.2, okay, that's going to go to 9, and then I add 5 to it. Or I can use the floor function, all right, 8.2, and that's going to give me 8. And even if I put in 8.99, that's still going to give me 8. It's going to go to the, the lower integer of that value. Okay, the next part is saving a data file. Okay, we can have data in our program. We want to put that out to a text file. We can do that with this command here, save ASCII file name and then data. So let's just have my number, which is equal to eight. And then I'm going to save that. And I'm going to put in a couple different flags here. I can put in ASCII and append. And then I have number.txt. And then I'm going to save my number. You're going to see on the left here, this file is going to appear. It's going to appear as a text file. So it just created the text file, and it should appear on the right uh, soon. OK, there it is. So if I double click it, I can see that there's the value 8. And if I have the append in there, and then I do 9 and run it again, and then I double click this, I can see that I have eight and then nine. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, take off the append flag. Let's say I just wanted to overwrite that with just the nine value. And I can see there's only the nine there. All right, so let's go on to loading a data file. Data files could be on your computer, like a comma, comma separated value file an Excel file, a database. They could also be from an internet source. So there's a little bit more information here on data analysis, how to import data and analyze it with MATLAB. This one's just a little bit more advanced. So I'm gonna make it a little simpler, just load number. Okay, so it could be your number.txt. 
txt. And when you run that, okay, it's going to then update um, the variable without the extension. Okay, it's going to create a variable without this extension right here. All right, and just take and make the variable equal to whatever the file is called. All right, so let's do an activity now. We're going to make a function that uses input for two values. Function should take two values, add a second number to the first number 20 times, and return the new value. Okay, so we're going to create a new function. So this is going to combine some of the things that we learned in um, module six. So I'm going to request input. X is going to be equal to input. And I'll just say that's my X value. And then Y is going to be my second input. Okay, and if I do this, I can say two and three. All right, and I've got those values. I'm going to put semicolons there because I don't necessarily want to spit those back out. All right, so now what I want to do is create a function. And I'm going to return a Z value. I'm just going to call this FCN for function. And then I'm going to create a for loop. Okay, for I equals 1 to 20. And then I'm going to do X plus equals Y. Okay, to add the value of Y to X and do that 20 more times. And then I'm going to end with Z is going to be equal to X. So that's going to be my output is going to be equal to Z because I defined that here in my function. All right, and then in the end, we want to call that function with the X and Y values. So let's just go ahead and do this. I'll just start with something simple. And you can see the values of X and the final answer is going to be 22 because it added this number 20 times to the value of x. Finally, put out the value z and then return that from the function. Okay, let's go on to the next one. We're going to create a while loop to keep asking for the user input for an LED light power percentage. Make the code so if you enter the value of zero, the program is going to stop. We'll go ahead and save the sequence of values to a text file. So the very first thing that we want to do here, uh, remember on each of these you want to try it yourself. If you can't get it, then come back to this video. Okay, so I want to first of all go ahead and clear the lab and then connect to the lab. So that just clears the connection if it existed. All right, while x is not equal to zero. All right, I'm going to do this loop. And in here, I'm going to ask for a new input. So I'll just say x equals one, first of all, just so it won't terminate that loop. All right, and then inside this loop, we want to ask the user for an input. And I'll say uh, LED power. All right, so uh, we're then going to update the LED power with X. And I'll go ahead and end it. Now we want to save the sequence, the sequence to a text file. So here, let's go ahead and do save. And then we'll do um, ASCII. And let's go ahead and do the one that helps us to um, append to the end of it, so not replace it. And then we're going to have, uh, I'll call that LED.text, and then let's input our X value. Okay, I think this is it. Uh, let's go ahead and close, uh, we'll clear lab when we're done. Okay, it's going to run. Here's the LED power, I'm going to say it's four. Okay, should input again. Let's see why that's not working. Okay, I saved. Uh, oh, you know what? I need to stop that because I should have done a string here 
for the file name. Okay, I'm going to need to stop the kernel. Uh, let's see, I'll go ahead and restart the kernel. So that just restarts. So it uh, breaks that, you know, if I have something going on here um, where it isn't going to end it. Let's see, there it is, there's led.txt. Hmm, okay, let's see why this would have a problem. Okay, um, everything looks okay to me. Let me try to run it again. I'm not sure if that was the problem. Uh, let's go ahead and just try it. LED power, I'll set that equal to four. I'll set it equal to 20 this time. And it looks like it's freezing up. It doesn't like it looping over and over again for some reason. Let's just see if that works in MATLAB. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, switch this out. All right, kernel, change kernel. There's just something with the Jupyter Notebook, I think. I don't think there's anything wrong with this. It's just, and this would work in the Octave interface. It's just something with Jupyter Notebook. It doesn't like to do multiple inputs uh, in the same block of code. Okay, so I'm going to try MATLAB instead. Let's just see if MATLAB will let me do this. This could be just a... Uh, I'll try it in the Octave interface as well. You see how it isn't even putting anything out in um, in MATLAB. Okay, so let me go ahead and just stop this. I'm going to uh, interrupt kernel, and let me go ahead and just put this into into Octave or into MATLAB, either one. All right, so I'm going to try MATLAB for this one. Just copy the code in there. So this is an exercise we might have to do in MATLAB instead of in Jupyter Notebook. Okay, I'm going to create a new script. All right, and I'll go ahead and save it. And this will be my uh, input test. Okay, so here I have it. Uh, input test and let's go ahead and just run this one and see if I get some inputs. Okay, it's going to connect. I have the firmware loaded for Octave. Let me just go with uh, Octave instead. I'm going to close this out and I'll go back to Octave for this. I could run it in either one, just the firmware isn't loaded right now for Arduino. so. Um, Anyway, let me go ahead and just run this and come to the current directory, which is desktop, and then um, begin MATLAB and Octave, and then I'm going to come to input test, and hopefully MATLAB didn't just write over, okay, the uh, firmware. I'm going to go back to MATLAB. All right, so let's go ahead and just try this one more time. I'm going to go ahead and save file and run, and let's just see uh, what it does on the command terminal here. Okay, I'm going to go back to the command window, LED power, I'm going to set that to 5, 10, 15, 30, 50, okay, 100, and I can see the LED changing. And then when I put it to zero, it ends. Okay, so that worked correctly, uh, but I had to go back to the Octave, an Octave um, GUI or else from the command line with Octave. All right, there's just something with the Jupyter Notebook that that didn't work. All right, and let's go look at the LED.txt, and I could see the sequence of inputs that I gave it, it just appended it to that file. All right, that's it for the inputs. Uh, I've just shown how to input something from a user. You can use input, or you can input from a data file with the load command. You can also save off data to a text file. Uh, and this is, for example, an ASCII file that we can either write to each time or append to.